was someone that most people wanted to know. He was complicated, interesting, smart, funny, compelling, and a true Renaissance man. Arnold was my pal. Um, Arnold also reminded me an awful lot of my own dad. Um, he just had that kind of a personality. We laughed so much. In fact, that's sort of what we did together. What a life force indeed. The same life force coupled with his fiercely independent pride that caused him to reject my helping hand when I offered some assistance with his robe after he made a pit stop in the bathroom less than a week before his passing. I actually half expected at one point that he would turn to me and, invoking his best Piscopo as Sinatra, intone, hey pal, I got chunks of guys tougher than you in my stool. <laughs> Suffice it to say, sometimes pride is not one of the seven deadly sins, but a life force to be reckoned with and it kept my dad strong and even a tad hopeful to the very end. When I was a little kid, whenever we were coming here and I knew that I was going to see him, I would always get excited and just anxious in the car and ready to see him because he had this way about him which is always making me smile. And, and I could tell from everybody's stories today um, that, I mean, he had that effect on everybody. In honor of Uncle Arnold, uh, is my hair look good? <laughs> This is what I think of Arnold. He was always playing with the kids. He always had a great sense of humor. And he was always nice. What I remember most about him was the little things that he did. He was the family champion at dreidel spinning. He was always on the floor with the children at family parties and encouraging them to have a friendly competition. He was always encouraging kids to make them have co friendly competitions. He was also the family master of dreidel, of course. I gave him my usual wrap-up, briefing him about work and my social life. Any girls, he always asked. He got to the point rather quickly. <laughs> in the art of conversation, Papa always dominated, but in a good way, in that you'd let him because you wanted him to. I told him that I was going on a date in a couple of days, getting lunch and picnicking at a park near my place in San Francisco. Let's be honest, he said bluntly. There's no action in a daytime date. <laughs> Arnold and I used to trade jokes just to make everybody happy. He'd tell me one and I'd try to top him, he'd try to top me. But he was a gentleman. He's always been the father who wouldn't grow up. And it has served you well. It has served all of us well. You knew that laughter was always the best medicine. There was a time for seriousness, but the time is never now. I think the first time that I met Arnold, he was wearing a pink shirt and his tight jeans, and he was hot. And my mother, Ada, thought he was hot too. She told me a few stories as well when they went swimming. And One of the attributes that I found enduring was that Arnold was a gentleman of the old school. He always stood when a lady came to or left the dining room table. That made us women feel special. He always made me feel special, and he was a huge flirt, and he always looked incredibly damper. I took some wisdom from my uncle today. His philosophy was that it's better to look good than to feel good. <laughs> So we were here on Mother's Day, which was lovely, and I sat with Arnold and had a wonderful conversation about stuff, actually life stuff. And the next day was Monday, I was at the mall, and who was walking towards me but Arnold. So I say, Arnold, what's going on? And he gives me a big hug and a kiss, and we chat for a while and all that. Now this is only in May, so this is now you know the beginning of August, not that long ago. And it was great to see him, it sort of lifted my day, and I went home. and. I guess talked to Hope the next day and I said, you know, I ran into your dad. She goes, oh my God, I know, she said. He called me up and said, I ran into Janie at the mall and I was wearing the very same outfit. I noticed these things. I'm a wardrobe person. I didn't have a clue. I knew he looked great, his hair looked good. I didn't know he done, had done a repeat of his outfit. when a 
radio wasn't on at some point in our home. Music defined a part of our life and how we lived and what we believed in. It still carries me throughout my life, and I can always count on it to help me and hold me. And I have him to thank for that. There are so many stories that we all sh will share in the days and weeks to come. But I have one very vivid, vivid memory. The Los Angeles Sports Arena, early 80s, Bruce Springsteen concert. I used to be embarrassed about it, how we always knew all the lyrics to every song <laughs> that was on the radio and had no problem singing them out loud and in front of my friends. <laughs> I took hope, and who was on the opposite side of where we sat? Barb and Arn. You couldn't miss him. He knew every lyric, he sang along, and he danced. They used to think it was so cool, and I was mortified. What a fan he was, and how mortified Hope was. <laughs> but after I was at a Bruce Springsteen concert, much later on, with my friend Lisa, and across the arena were Barb and Arm, rocking out, <laughs> I knew that I just had to finally accept and try to embrace them. Spring goes slams, Mary's just sweet. Like a vision, she dances across the porch as the radio plays. Roy Orbison singing for the long. And speaking of renditions, my older son Sandy and I had the privilege and pleasure of playing our pop concert for him, Six Beatles Songs and Somewhere Over the Rainbow, five days before the end. And he listened quite intently and heaped appropriate praise on the sound my Yamaha acoustic guitar produced, not on my plane. Though he did like the rhythm I maintained on I Want to Hold Your Hand. But the point is here that he was amazingly tuned in enough until the very end, despite his debilitated, moribund state, to offer two critiques of Octopus's Garden and Can't Buy Me Love. The latter, our closing number, played with so much verb, bri verb, brio, and accelerated tempo that he did not even recognize it. And it was not due to his diminished abilities. It was because we were playing it too damn fast. And so as a tribute to Papa's discriminating ear, Sandy and I have now slowed down those two Beatles ditties to their appropriate and yes, more aesthetically pleasing speeds. Papa knew his pop music business truly right up until the moment that darkness fell. We bantered, we talked, we carried on. I'll miss them a lot, but I'm not letting them go. I'm making them stay right here with us 
and taking care of his Barbara and his children that he loved dearly, his family. I just love Arnold. I just love them. I still love him. I'm not going to say past tense about Arnold. He's not ever going to be past tense with me. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye. Arnold, I'll see you soon. Okay?